Now, China has launched its experimental reusable spacecraft. This is the third time uh, it's done it, Brad. So uh, what exactly do we know about this particular launch? Yeah, and, and it kind of goes off the back of the U.S. preparing for their X-37B launch. It was scheduled for last week, and it's been slightly delayed. And, and the X-37B, just like this Chinese plane, um, are, are pretty much space drones. They're about the size of each other. They, they're about eight metric tons, about uh, maybe about a quarter the size the U.S. space shuttle used to be. Uh, and they're autonomous. So they go up there. There's no one piloting it. They fly, and then they come back down and land as an airplane. Now, there's a lot of secrecy around both programs, the Chinese and U.S. program. Most are, are clearly that they serve some sort of military function. Uh, it is believed that they're either testing new satellites or equipment, uh, using it as a new way of prototyping uh, technologies in space, uh, and obviously being used for military spy purposes. The last launch, the second launch, it was able to stay in orbit for 276 days, so just around seven months or so. So it'll be interesting to see how long this one stays in orbit. The first launch was only a few days, and then it was about seven months, so we'll see how long this one stays up there. Uh, the U.S.'s version has been able to stay in orbit for at least four years, so these are very useful um, ways of getting things into space, maybe for very clear or short purposes, either for testing or operational use. Yeah, OK. It just seems like every country are doing their bit in this uh, ever-fascinating yeah. space race, that's for sure, Brad. Now, just finally, the sun has unleashed what's being described as a monster solar flare, and it's the most powerful since 2017. Yeah, this is what we call an X 2.8 flare. So uh, the sun goes through periods of eruptions and uh, the sun has a, a, an activity cycle of 11 years where you get more or less of them and we're in this very massive period of more. Now, solar flares come in sizes. The, the B and C ones are fairly weak. M's the middle in terms of energy and X are the most powerful. And there's even a scale of that X1, X2, 3, and so on. So the bigger the letter and the bigger the, the number, the more energy that is released. And as you said, the biggest one in about six or so years. Now, when these flares erupt, um, occasionally they hit the Earth. Now, when they hit the Earth, they often produce the aurora that we see, which is fantastic to go out and look at. Big enough ones can actually cause interference and disruptions to networks on Earth. So they can create simple things like interference with high-frequency bandwidths. Uh, bigger storms can interfere with satellites, and even larger storms can impact electrical systems here on Earth. So it's a really important part of what we do in space and a lot of studying the sun, and that is measuring the activity of the sun and the solar weather, because that will have a big impact on Earth, because a big enough storm can cause such large disruptions to electrical systems, and our modern day is based on electrical systems that could really cause a havoc. So uh, the storm, uh, which happened on the 14th, if it does hit, obviously it weakens as it hits the Earth, uh, it travels through space, before it hits the Earth, um, would potentially hit here on the 17th or so. How much of it or how big of an impact, we're not quite sure. Um, but so far, it shouldn't be too large of a one, but a reminder but of why we study these things and that larger ones could happen in the future. So you're talking the 17th of December, tomorrow? That's right. Something okay. to keep an eye out for. I, also, if you like to watch Aurora tomorrow night, maybe a great chance to go out and spot the Aurora in the southern part of the country. All right, there you go. Any sky gazers who want to just have a look up into the sky tomorrow? That's Brad's tip. We appreciate it, Brad. <laughs> Always good to speak with you. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks.